This is going to be my final video on elasticities. In previous lessons, we've talked about price elasticity of demand, price elasticity of supply, and cross-price elasticity of demand. In this final elasticity video, we're going to focus on income elasticity of demand. We'll start with the definition. We'll look at the formula. We'll do an example of how YED can be calculated looking at two different goods. And we'll talk about the interpretation of the YED coefficient. Let's start with the definition of income elasticity of demand. First of all, where does the Y come from? Y is the common economist's abbreviation for income, believe it or not. We don't use I because this is used for investment in macroeconomics. So YED stands for Income Elasticity of Demand, and it is defined as the responsiveness of consumers of a particular good to a change in their own incomes. In other words, how much will demand for a particular good increase or decrease following a particular change in incomes? Now, something you may have learned in an earlier unit when learning the determinants of demand was that changes in income will affect demand for different goods in different ways. Some goods are what we call normal goods, and others are what we call inferior goods. A normal good is one that will have a direct relationship between consumers' incomes and demand. An inferior good, on the other hand, will reflect an inverse relationship between incomes and demand. In other words, as incomes rise, demand for some things rises, while demand for other things falls. As incomes fall, demand for some things rises, in fact, while demand for other things falls. This has an impact on our understanding of income elasticity of demand, as we're about to see in our example. The formula for YED should look familiar to those of you who have already studied elasticities. YED, income elasticity of demand, equals the percent change in the quantity demanded of a good resulting from or divided by the percent change in incomes, which we use capital Y as an abbreviation. Let's go on and do an example here. We've got on our right the weekly demand for restaurant meals and the weekly demand for fast food meals. Let's assume that restaurant meals are a normal good. As incomes rise, people tend to go out to restaurants more whereas demand for fast food meals is an inferior good. As incomes rise, people will go to fast food restaurants less as they go to sit-down restaurants more frequently. Let's assume that the United States, which we'll use as our example here, is experiencing a recession and incomes fall on average across the nation by 3%. The definition of a recession is a period of falling incomes. Therefore, we can assume that a 3% decrease in incomes means that the United States is experiencing a recession. The question is, what impact will this have on the demand for restaurant meals and the demand for fast food meals? Let's start with restaurant meals. Restaurant meals are a normal good. The 3% decrease in incomes will cause demand for restaurant meals to fall as consumers choose to eat at home or go to fast food restaurants rather than going to more expensive sit-down restaurants. Assume that at the original price of P1, there will now be less demand for restaurant meals. Let's say the quantity demanded for restaurant meals falls to 950,000, or 0 0.95 million. Let's now calculate the YED for restaurant meals following a 3% decrease in incomes. The YED for restaurant meals can be calculated as follows. We first have to calculate the percent change in quantity demanded for restaurant meals. We'll use the same method we do for all our other elasticities. We'll take Q2 minus Q1 divided by Q1. This gives us a decrease of 5% or 0 0.05. Let's compare this to the decrease in income. Incomes fell, so we can say the change in income was negative, 3%. This gives us a YED for restaurant meals of negative 5 divided by negative 3, which is 1.67. Notice that the negative signs cancel each other out, and what we get is a positive YED coefficient for restaurant meals. This will be important when we interpret the YED coefficient values in just a moment. Now let's look at the market for fast food meals. Assume that the fall in American incomes lead more Americans to wish to go to fast food restaurants, which are a cheaper alternative to sit-down restaurants. Therefore, the demand for fast food meals rises at every price. Assume that the increase in demand means that at the original price, instead of 1 million restaurant meals being demanded, 1.09 million restaurant meals will be demanded. With this information, we can now calculate the YED for fast food meals. The YED for fast food is the percent change in the quantity, which is 1.9 million minus 1 million, 
divided by 1 million, which equals 9%. And this is an increase of 9% since demand increased. And we'll divide that by the percent change in incomes, which was negative 3%. We get 9 divided by negative 3. We get an income elasticity of demand of negative 3 for fast food meals. Now, why do we include the negative sign? The reason we include the negative sign is that this reflects the type of good that fast food meals are. The negative income elasticity of demand for fast food meals tells us right away that fast food is an inferior good, whereas the positive income elasticity of demand for restaurant meals tells us right away that restaurant meals are a normal good. Now what do the absolute values of the YED coefficients tell us? The same things that they do for all other types of elasticity. If the YED coefficient is between 0 and 1, then consumers of the good are relatively income inelastic. This means that a particular change in income will lead to a smaller percentage change in the demand for the good in question. In the case of restaurant meals and fast food meals, however, we have a YED coefficient of more than one. If YED is greater than one, it means that consumers are relatively responsive to changes in income. In the case of restaurant meals, for every 1% decrease in income, demand for restaurant meals fell by 1.67%. In the case of fast food, for every 1% decrease in income, demand for fast food meals rose by 3%. So the YED coefficient tells us the ratio of the percent change in the demand for a good over the percent change in the income of consumers. And now down to our interpretation. Normal goods will always have a positive YED coefficient. This is because as incomes rise, demand for normal goods increases. So YED will always be positive. On the other hand, as incomes fall, demand falls meaning that the demand for a normal good and income will always move in the same direction. Inferior goods are a different story. Inferior goods are those which consumers demand more of as their incomes fall and less of as their incomes rise. The negative YED coefficient is evidence of this inverse relationship between incomes and demand. As incomes fall, demand for inferior goods rises. So interpreting our YED coefficient, we know that if YED is between 0 and 1, then demand for a good is income inelastic, meaning that consumers are relatively unresponsive to income changes. If YED is greater than 1, then we know that demand for a good is income elastic, meaning that consumers are relatively responsive to income changes. That was the case for both restaurant meals and fast food meals in our example. The negative sign tells us that a good is an inferior good since the relationship between income and demand is inverse. If YED is positive, then we know two goods are normal goods since an increase in incomes will cause demand to rise and a decrease in incomes will cause demand to fall. Looking back at our example, we could have told a different story. We could have said, what happens if average incomes in America rise by 3%? How will this affect demand for restaurant meals and demand for fast food meals? And we would have seen changes in the opposite directions. Higher incomes would have caused demand for restaurant meals to rise, but the YED coefficient would still have been positive. Higher incomes would cause demand for fast food meals to fall as consumers who might have gone to cheaper fast food restaurants are now going to go to sit down restaurants instead. And the YED coefficient would be negative since demand would fall as a result of higher incomes. To wrap up our lessons on elasticity, we have now learned about all four types of elasticity in economics, PED, PES, XED, and now income elasticity of demand, the measure of the responsiveness of consumers of a particular good to a change in their own incomes.